Hey guys, back for another requested video. And this one, there's gonna be no rigging bits and pieces at all. It's just gonna have a chat. And we'll get straight into the end of this one. I've been asked actually a few times on what turns fish on and off. And this one uh, is a really big, uh, deep rabbit hole. There's so many different things. Everyone's got a different theory. Uh, which reminds me, you guys, after this video, I'd like you to get in the comments and tell me what you find turns fish and what turns your favourite fish on and off. Um, and just, yeah, this just could be a really good discussion and it'd be interesting to see what we all think about um, how it all works. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to let you know, guys know what I found. This is for me personally. Um, I'm going to have a quick chat about like tides, moons, barometers, seasons, you know, daytime, nighttime, hooks and baits and things like that, okay? And what I found were certain species, not all species, like every species is different. Um, some are responding to tides, some are spend daytime, nighttime, some are really finicky and yeah, it depends on you know, your leaders and hooks and everything else. Um, there's just so many, like I said, to rabbit holes, so many different things you can turn fish on and off. So we'll just get into it and what I found for, I might, I might go through all the species, just give you an idea, and then hopefully you guys will join in in the comments and tell me what you think turns on, turns fish on and off. All right, the first one we'll come, I'll talk about is tides and currents. Tides and currents definitely plays a part in a lot of species, not all species, but a lot of species. Um, what I've found, depending on the species you chase, like different species, like different tides and currents, we'll start off, with I was when I was fishing pro fishing, this is pro fishing, I know this because I used to catch tons and tons of them, is like red emperor. Red emperor love a high current, like a really high current. A lot of it's really hard to fish in high current. A lot of fish don't like really high high currents. But when you're up on the reef, red emperor especially love high currents. Um, and when the current slow down, we used to sit down, play cards, have a feed, do whatever. But when the current's really racing, we'd watch the smaller boats disappear because they can't fish. But you can use downrigger, big downrigger balls, or just big sinkers, and fish in high currents, and anchor off the fish and bring the fish to you. Let the baits do the smell, or the smell, or the baits drop off and down, bring the fish to you. Red emperor like high currents. Um, down here when I'm fishing, like for snapper and jewfish, I don't find a run-in tide or run-out tide. This is offshore. Anything doesn't really matter, but I do find if you can get a tide change. Not slack water itself, but a couple of hours before the tide change and a couple of hours after usually works well. And that's probably the main key for most species. A couple of hours on the side of a tide change usually works very well. Most species will slow down over a tide change, like when you get slack water. Have lunch or do something else for like half an hour, 40 minutes, until the current starts running again, then the fish will come back on the tube. The tide chains are a, are a main main one. Um, I'm going to say also, hang on, uh, currents. I just talked about currents, like red emperor like currents. Most fish like currents, actually. That's that's true. Offshore, when it's high current, it is very hard to fish, but the fish will chew if you can keep your baits down there. That's where you come into like big sinkers or get smart, use it like a downrigger and use it as your weight system in high currents. High currents work for pretty much all species. But when you're offshore and there's absolutely no current, little or no current, most species will shut down and make it very hard to catch. So current's always a good thing. Tide changes are a very good thing, okay? Um, the actual tide change slack water is not a good thing. That's just, just wait around because that slows all fish down until it changes. So they're a good one. Uh, next one I'll get into is just moon uh, phases. I'll be honest, I don't look too heavily to, into moon phases. You heard me, guys, say, you've heard me say it before, if the weather's good, you've got free time, go fishing. You'll catch fish over all, pretty much all moon phases. Um, in saying that, if I can fish like a new moon rising, that's usually, I find, the best time for a few fish. And even a few, like, like three or four nights after a full moon and the, full, and the moon falling, it's not bad. The moon, I'd really despise but if the weather's good i'll still fish it don't it's really hard fishing but the moon i mainly hate is a full moon like two nights before two nights after over the full moon so that five nights i don't like fishing too much unless i've got free time and the weather's good i'll go and give it a crack you can still catch fish it's just a lot harder okay but that's the one moon i try to avoid the rest rest of the time 
I won't worry about it. Won't worry about it. I really won't. Uh, barometer. Like I said, guys, I'll just, I'll just try and get through this list I've got here behind you. Otherwise, it would be a very long video going through all the species and stuff. I'm just going to give you the tips and you guys in the comments and join right in and just tell me what you think. Barometer. Basically, I always find a rising barometer. Most people will tell you a rising barometer is always the best for most species. So if you've got a barometer at home, just keep an eye on it. If it's rising, good time to go. Simple. It really is that simple. Okay. Seasons. Well, that's going to depend on the species you're going to chase. Yes, all fish will respond to seasons. Like here in southeast Queensland, over summer we'll get all the plagics and stuff. Over winter we'll get more bottom bash and cobia and cold water species. Like it switches over. Seasons does play a main part. It does play a part depending on what species you want to chase. Okay, that's no big one. That's fairly easy. Nighttime and daytime. This a lot of people get mixed up or not mixed up. But a lot of people are fishing daytime. People won't fish nighttime. I know I've see, I can see more and more people offshore with me at nighttime. More and more people are going offshore and fishing around the broad water and rivers and stuff at night. Um, but still, not as many as there probably should be. Nighttime fishing is very, very good, okay? With lures and baits. Just because the sun's don't going down, guys, don't think you have to go home. Like, if you've got kids or something or whatever and you have to go home, fine. But if there's no reason to go home and the sun's going down, stay out there. Stay fishing. It works well. Unless you're not experienced offshore and you're not used to crossing bars and stuff at night time, by all means, if you feel safer, go home. And, yeah. But if you have a chance to fish night, night time is very, very good. And once again, tides come into it. Either side of a tide change does work, okay? A couple of hours before, a couple of hours after. Tide changes at night time, very good. And my all-time favourite, if I can manage to line it up at some stage, like most people, if you get a tide change early morning, late afternoon, go fishing. It doesn't matter what species it's for, all species. Early morning, late afternoon, tide change, go for a fish. They're hard to come across, but if you get them, go. It's good for all species, Okay. Next one that plays a part is weather. Weather does play a part, obviously. If it's too rough, you can't get offshore, you stay stuck inshore. Um, but here's one thing people really get confused about is rain. I find rain quite good for fishing. Um, and if we get a lot of rain, especially in the rivers like Gold Coast, Southeast Queensland stuff and around all canals, if we get a really heavy rain, it turns the water brown, everyone wins it in bitches, but it doesn't take long to clear up. And what that does is give all your systems and stuff a good flush out. So after that, it's really good fishing. And if you don't get like flooding rain, you just get some rain that stirs up the water a little bit, don't sit at home whinging. Go fish like river mouths, seaways, creek beds, um, the close reefs. Look for dewfish and stuff and snapper. They love it. Rain's good. Rain's not too bad. Unless it's a big downpour and actually floods everything, just wait till it starts clearing up. But it's a good thing because it'll clear out the systems and everything else and usually brings the fish on. So, yeah, rain's a good thing. Um... Like I said before, daytime, nighttime, like if it's a nice, a nice sunny day, which is great for fishing, great for us out, getting burnt, you know, getting a tan, it's great. But still, fish don't like the middle of the day when it's really hot, unless you're out trawling out wide for marlin and, you know, mahi mahi and wahoo and stuff, they don't really care. They'll pick off lures and stuff all throughout the day. If you're going chasing snapper and jews and cobia, unless you're going out wide and fishing deep water, middle of the day is not so good, okay? So fishing in close reefs, we like to fish morning and afternoons and night time, okay? If you want to go fish all day and you've got the boat to do it, go right out wide, go out in the deep water. I'm talking like 36 to 50s, so basically 60 to 100 metres. And you can fish all day, it doesn't matter too much. Even in close, um, like you're fishing in around the broadwater and stuff or the rivers, you can fish all day, that's fine. Morning and afternoon still usually the best, but if you want to go cast some plastic for flathead, Go all day, but try and work around tide changes and stuff if you can, okay? Tide changes really does help, especially for those fish as well. Brim will pretty much feed all day. Jacks will feed all day and most of the night. Um, but just, you know. Uh, so, yeah, weather, well, sun doesn't matter too much. Nighttime's good. Wind, wind does play a part. I did nearly skip that. Wind does play a part for some reason. I must admit, 
It depends. Um, it does different things with water. Like here, you get an oily winds over summer. It what we call rolls rolls the water over. It turns it cold, green and cold. If you get a southerly buster here, it blows the water the other way, rolls over the other way. Basically, it's what we say rolls. Um, it turns the water nice, blows a nice blue water in close, and it's warm. So southerlies here, especially over summer, is great. Northerlies here over summer hurts, slows everything down. Doesn't stop, but slows it down. Um, Winter time here, Westerly winds, I find Westerly's really good. I know like people winter about Westerly's and stuff, but I like Westerly's because I fish close. Most of you guys know I fish at close reefs. So I can usually get out in Westerly's and you can chase big tailor on the beaches and you can chase dewies and snap on the close reefs. It brings a cobia on. So winds do play a part. Um, they do different things with the water. Like I grew up in Victoria, or the first few years of my life was in Victoria, fishing as a young fella. I know down there, my uncle and a few other people used to tell me easterly winds are terrible. Fish won't bite in easterlies down there. Strange but true. So winds do play a part and that's something you've got to learn from where you are, whereabouts in the country or the world you are. But winds do play a part. Uh, next one I've got up here, bait lures presentation. Well, that is a big one too. Lures and bait presentation it does turn fish on and off. Um, lures... You've got to really work out the action for them. You can just cast out and wind. Some lures will let you do that, and they'll wind and swim nicely. That's fine. Other lures, you've got to really rip and jerk, like jerk baits. Soft plastics, you can either stand there and shake or jerks. you just got to work out the action of lures or talk to people that use them. That does make a big thing. Um, baits, definitely. Bait presentation, if you just whack a bait on and throw it in the water and it's a little bit of current and it's spinning or doing something really stupid in the water, it'll, fish will just disappear. They won't have a, a bar of it, they'll leave. It'll turn them off. But if you have a nice bait presentation, like put on nicely and it's in the current and it's wafting slowly in the current, it looks like a, or floating down, it's doing what it should in a bit of current, yeah, great, that's fine. You're going to get plenty of, plenty of bites. Also, leaders. Um, fluorocarbon leaders, I believe, will help you in the shallow, clear water. Offshore, I'm not really a strong fan of using it offshore. I don't think it matters too much. I fish with guys who use fluorocarbon. I don't and still can outfish them. Um, some guys will argue with that and say when they're marlin fishing and looking for numbers, a fluorocarbon does help out with live baits. It might. I don't know. I don't get that far into it. Um, but definitely in a shallow water, clearer water, when you're looking for fish in shallow clear waters, fluorocarbon lines will help with a well presented bait or lure, so definitely. Um, the thickness of your leaders and your main line definitely helps. The lighter you can fish, always the better. The smaller the sinker, smaller the weight you can use, always the better. Some guys just want to put 80 pound, 100 pound leader for everything and then go out there and wonder why they don't catch much. So lighter leaders, lighter lines, and the smaller sink you can get away with definitely does help. It really does. Heavy gear, big big bricks of sinkers hitting the bottom, and big baits and big massive hooks and heavy, uh, yeah, that shies fish away. It really, it stops them. So that doesn't work too well either. So you've really got to think about, yeah, your line diameter and your weights and your size of your hooks compared to your baits and what you're going to chase. It really does play a part in it, guys. You can't just put any bait on any sort of line drop it down and hopefully you catch a fish. You probably will catch a fish or get a bite, but you're not gonna catch probably not what you're after or all numbers, it will slow down. So baits, lures, um, leader, lines, sinkers, everything. Presentation really does play a main part, it really does. Uh, what else I've got there? Well, that's pretty much it. I think I've, I've been waddling off a bit of here. Um, yeah, once again, fishing, there's really no set rules in fishing, guys. If you've got the time and the thing, get out and try it. Experiment, try different things. If you're not sure, ask some friends who go fishing, ask some locals. Um, some locals will share, some won't, they get clamber up, I don't know why. Um, local tackle shops will help you out with bits and pieces and stuff well as well. It's... Uh, I guess by turning fish on and off, yeah, I think I've gone through most of it, guys. Um, be interested to see what you say in the comments, what you find turns fish on and off. Uh, like I said, the barometers and stuff, rising is always better. Falling does tend to slow fishing down. Tides and currents definitely plays a, uh, a role. Seasons, depending on what you want to chase, yes. Rain and stuff can. There's so many different things, but... Honestly, like I said, fishing 
just go out and experiment, have some fun, get out and give it a crack, hey. See what happens, talk to people, talk to tackle shops. Don't sit online and on these so-called online forums, listen to these guys on these forums. Been there, done that, and most of these guys live on the forums and don't actually go fishing. I know that's gonna stir some people up. Uh, that'll get some comments. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see how happy each other are, guys. Tell me down in the comments what you think turns fish on and off or your favorite species and what you find turns them off, weather-wise, tide-wise, current, leaders. Just let us know in the comments. Um, and we'll just you know, help each other out here. And it should be a rather interesting conversation. Uh, apart from that, I think I've... There, yeah, that's it. I've had enough. Once again, if you like the videos, like and subscribe. It helps me out and look forward to reading your comments about this one should be interesting thanks guys i'll see you next week